Algebraic proofs are a formal way of putting your steps for an algebraic equation in order. The properties of equality are your algebraic properties that you've learned last year, but we're going to review them now. And then we're going to set up formal proofs for solving an equation. The addition property is just when you're adding the same thing to each side of an equation. So if you add a variable c to both sides of an equation, that's the addition property. Subtraction property is when you subtract the same thing from both sides of an equation. Multiplication is when you multiply both sides by the same thing. Division is where you divide both sides of an equation by the same number or variable. Reflexive Oftentimes students will get reflexive property confused with symmetric property. Reflexive property is when you have exactly the same thing on both sides of an equation. So if I had a plus b equals a plus b, that's the reflexive property. It's like when you look in a mirror and you get your reflection. It's exactly the same thing on both sides of the mirror and where you're standing. The symmetric property, if you know what a line of symmetry is, think of like a heart. If you draw a line of symmetry, that means that if you were to fold along the line of symmetry, you'd have two equal halves. The two equal halves would fold on top of each other. Well, you, in the symmetric property, you're going to see the word then. If you were to fold along the line then, or the word then, the B would fall on top of the B and the A would fall on top of the A. So it's going to be symmetric on both sides, but it will be separated by the word then. Okay, transitive property. Transitive property is where you're going to have A equals B and B equals C, where you'll have two of the same terms back to back. Then you can conclude, cut out the middleman, the two back to back terms, you can conclude that A equals C. This looks just like the law of syllogism that we just talked about where you have PQ, QR, PR. The Q's are back to back so you're left with P then R. Substitution property is anytime you replace one term with an So for this example it says if A equals B then B can replace A in any expression because they're the same thing. So I could just say that A equals A. So if I originally have A equals B and then in the next line I have A equals A, then I've used the substitution property because I've substituted A, or sorry, B for A. And then the distributive property is when you take one term and you multiply it to two other terms or more than two terms inside a set of parentheses. So A would be multiplied to B to leave us with AB, and A would be multiplied to C to leave us with AC. These properties, like I said, you've, you've learned them in the past in algebra, and they're going to help us in geometry because it's going to help us to learn how to do a formal proof. So the first way we're going to look at these examples is we're going to look at where we just see one step, and we have to determine what that step property is. And then later on, we'll add more than one step to the um, proof. So right here, if you have 3x divided by 3 and 120 divided by 3, all that we've done is we've divided both sides of this equation by the same number. So that's called the division property. OK, number 2, we have 12 equals AB, then AB equals 12. So what we've done is we flipped this around. Instead of saying 12 equals AB first, we flipped it and said AB equals 12. The property that's being shown here, remember when I said if you have the word then, you can think of the word then as your symmetric, your line of symmetry. And if you were to fold on this line of symmetry, the AB would fall on top of the AB and the 12 would fall on top of the 12. So because these are symmetric to each other, this is the symmetric property. All right, look at number three, and then look at your properties above if you haven't memorized them already, and pause the video to determine what you think number three is. 
Number three is the transitive property. So you have two terms that are the same back to back. When those two terms go away, and we determine that the first and the third term equal each other, that's called the transitive property. Okay, number four, if you look carefully, we have negative 5x plus 20 minus 20, and we have 70 plus 20. If you notice, they're both showing plus 20 on each side of the equation. So because we've added 20 to both sides of the equation, this is the addition property. Okay, number five, start with your if, and then look at your then, and see how did your hypothesis become your conclusion? What property allowed your hypothesis to become the conclusion? Pause the video to see if you get what I get. And normally you're not used to seeing equations written in if-then form, but in geometry we do a lot of that, and you'll see a lot of that happen when we talk about the properties of geometry. Okay, number six is a little tricky. We have, if x plus y equals z, and z equals 30, then x plus y equals 30. So take a look at it and see which property you think that it is. So if you notice, the z's were back to back. When they were eliminated, we were left with the first and third term equal to each other. And that's our transitive property. Okay, so number seven, how did your if become your then? So how did the hypothesis change to reach the conclusion? Now they're not gonna show you the property, they're just going to assume that you see what has happened from one step to the other. Pause the video and see if you get the correct answer. So you can kind of think of this one as, you can restack it. So you can say, this was your original equation, this was your if. 6x minus 7 equals 29. Now without showing the steps, what would your next step be in order to solve for x? Well, you would add 7 to both sides of the equation. Once you add 7 to both sides of your equation, you're left with 6x equals 36. Now they didn't show the part where they added 7 to both sides. All they did is they went from this step to this step. And since you guys have been in Algebra Part 1 and 2, you should be strong enough in your algebra solving for an equation that you were able to see how this first step became the last step. And that's how you're going to see the proofs operated. They're not going to show you the steps in between. So number 8, if it helps you, you can rewrite 3x plus 5 equals negative 22. And then on your own, determine what would your next step be to solve for x. That's probably how they got to the conclusion of this conditional statement. So pause the video and see if you can tell me which property they've used to get to the conclusion. And they've used the subtraction property. Our next step would be to subtract 5 from both sides of our equation, and we would be left with 3x equals negative 27. Okay, number 9. Our hypothesis is that x divided by 9 equals 2. If you were given that equation and you were asked to solve for x, you would do the opposite of dividing by 9 in order to eliminate the division of 9. So what you would do is you would multiply both sides of the equation by 9. Once you did that, you would get x equals 9 times 2, which is 18. And that's how they got to the conclusion. They multiplied both sides of the equation by 9. Okay, number 10, go ahead and pause the video. Take a look at the first step and see how it became the last step. And we should have gotten the um, di distributive property. Okay, so this is how a proof is going to look. You're going to have one step, and then underneath it, you'll have a following step. They're not going to show you how they got from the first step to the second. They're not going to show any work, but if it helps you to show the work for them, it might make it easier for the proof. So if this was your original equation and you were asked to solve for x, your first step would be to subtract 9. And then you would be left with 2x equals 19 minus 9, which is 10. So the question is, how did this first step become the second step? And your response would be the subtraction property. The subtraction property allowed me to go from the first step to the last.
last step. Okay, so for example B, how does the first step become the last step? Pause the video and see if you get what I get. So once again, if you had been asked to solve this equation, you would have divided both sides by 3, and you would have gotten that x is 50. The property we use to do that is the division property of equality. All right, in example C, go ahead and pause the video and see how, see if you got what I got. How did this first step become the last step? And if you don't know how I got this answer and you're still unsure of how I got it, go ahead and raise your hand or ask a neighbor. Okay, so that brings us to a formal algebraic proof. We're going to solve an equation starting from the very beginning until we've isolated our x value. When you're given a proof, they're going to have statement 1 and then whatever they want you to solve. They want you to solve 5x plus 3 equals negative 4. They want you to solve for x. The reasons are your properties, distributive, associative, uh, subtraction, addition, all of your properties that we just discussed. The only reason we haven't discussed yet is the first reason you see here, and that's given. When you have a formal proof, you're going to be given your original equation or your original statement. And the reason always is that it was given to you. So it's basically saying, why is 5x plus 3 equal to negative 4? Well, because it was given to me that way. Now your job is to figure out how did step 1 become step 2. Well, if you notice, they took 5 and multiplied it to the x, and they got 5x. They took 5 and they multiplied it to the 3, and they got 15. And the negative 4 stayed the same. So the property that allows us to distribute the 5 to the x and the 3 is called the distributive property. So the reason that the step 1 became step 2 goes in the next blank beside step 2. Now we try to figure out how did step 2 become step 3 and our reason will go here. So next step, 5x stayed the same. 15 is gone. And negative 4 became negative 19, meaning it got smaller. So how do you eliminate a positive 15 and make a negative 4 even smaller? And the only way you could have done that is if you had subtracted 15 from both sides of your equation. So you would have been left with 5x equals negative 4 minus 15, which is a negative 19. That's your subtraction property. All right, and the last step, how does 5x equal negative 19 become x equals negative 19 divided by 5? The reason will go here in this last spot. So if you were asked to solve this equation, what would you do to isolate your x or to get x by itself? Hopefully you would divide both sides of the equation by 5 and that would leave you with x equals negative 19 fifths. So what we did is we divided both sides of our equation by the same number, and that's the division property. Okay, so for the second example, I'd like for you to try it step by step on your own. Once you've completed the reasons, one, two, three, four, and five, all five reasons, unpause the video and make sure that you've gotten exactly what I have. If you're not sure what I got and how I got it, raise your hand or ask a neighbor. Okay, so your answers for steps or reasons one through five should be as followed. If there's any answer that you did not get and you're not sure why, please ask me or a neighbor. All right, go ahead and go on to Kia and take your exit quiz.